Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Cosmetic Institute. As one of the leading providers for breast augmentation within Australia, we get asked a lot about what happens within our facility. Today, we'd like to show you around. It seems so glossy and so simple. State-of-the-art facilities, highly trained surgeons and patient care at its highest priority. We hope you've enjoyed your insider look into the Cosmetic Institute here in Bondi. We hope to see you soon. Oh, I was in so much pain. I couldn't breathe. Every time I breathed, it felt like my back was broken or something, it was horrible. It's a dangerous business that they're in. It's our lives that they've got in their hand. They've got to take some ownership. We need to establish a benchmark for qualifications and a benchmark for where these procedures are being done before people die. Welcome to the Cosmetic Institute. <laughs> did everyone look as nervous as you felt? Yeah, they did. All the way through high school, 20-year-old Amy Rickhouse dreamed of having a breast enlargement. And like thousands of others, she chose the cheapest and the fastest growing in the business, the Cosmetic Institute. So what did the Cosmetic Institute offer that you found so attractive? Well, the way they advertise it's pretty good. I mean, like, you know, day in, you get it done, you sort of leave and rest in a hotel or at home, and the pricing of it seemed pretty, you know, reasonable. How did their prices compare to other places? To go to the Institute would have cost me half of what it would have cost here in Melbourne. $5,990 for new breasts, or $5 a day. Did they explain to you how they could offer you this surgery at such a cheap price? I think because they said they do the twilight um, anaesthetic, I'm pretty sure that's why, and because it's a day procedure. Clinics like the Cosmetic Institute can only use local anaesthetic and twilight or conscious sedation. What many don't tell their customers though is they're not allowed to use general anaesthetic. Ironically, the lighter sedation allows them to perform major surgeries in what is little more than office space without the costly hospital infrastructure or safety equipment required for general anaesthetic. Now, I wanted to save a little bit of money as well, so I started Googling cheap boob jobs. I literally Googled that and um, a place came up. The price that I saw was pretty much like, yay, yay, yay. So I started looking at it, I rung up and I liked what I heard. I liked what I saw on the website and I booked myself in for a consultation. Just being around here, it should have been a happy time for me, but unfortunately this place doesn't bring me happy thoughts. For 38-year-old Kylie Pollock, it was all about the price, and that led her to the Cosmetic Institute. And did you have any worries that, you know, if you're going for the cheap option, that you might be taking more risk? No, because they make it sound so good. I wanted boobs, and that's what I was getting, so I didn't worry about anything apart from when my date was, when the surgery was going to happen, and that was it. I was so excited. I was like a little kid in a candy shop, really. I mean, did you think of it as a serious operation? No, not at this stage. I just thought maybe they were going to put me to sleep for a little bit, do a little nip, put something in, and that was it. As easy as that? Just as easy as that. Instead, both Kylie and Amy were wheeled out of the Cosmetic Institute and rushed to hospital. Both were fighting for their lives. Amy had suffered a heart attack. Kylie was convulsing. So when you woke up, where were you? When I woke up, I was at the Westmead Hospital. What did the nurse tell you? Um, that I had a complication during surgery and that I went into a VF arrest. And I said, what's a VF arrest? And they said it's all well, basically a cardiac arrest and I had to be revived. What was your reaction to hearing that? I cried. It was pretty hard to think that that was myself. To be told that, you know, you nearly died. <laughs> it's pretty 
hard to hear? I don't remember. Apparently I woke up and I looked around and that and then I started having seizures and then I got rushed to hospital and I was still seizuring. What was happening to you? A lot of um, jaw jerking, um, a lot of eye movement. My whole body and head, I was like, I was just shaking and shaking. How lucky is that girl to be alive today? She's very fortunate. Dr Hugh Bartholomews is president of the Australian Society of Plastic Surgeons. He says lives are put at risk by cosmetic clinics because during major surgery, unlicensed to put patients under a general anaesthetic, they sometimes inadvertently use too much local anaesthetic. Local anaesthetics can endanger health basically by being at toxic levels. Also, if local anaesthetic is inadvertently injected into the bloodstream, it can cause toxic effects to the heart. Having now obtained both Kylie and Amy's medical records, there's no doubt that they ended up in hospital fighting for their lives because of a toxic reaction to a large dose of local anaesthetic. The question is, why were they given it in the first place? Again, it comes down to the fact that these cosmetic clinics are not licensed to give general anaesthetic. Instead, they put their patients under a light or conscious sedation and then use local anaesthetic to stop the pain of surgery. It's the overuse of that local anaesthetic that can lead to heart attacks and seizures. Did it worry you at all <laughs> that you're having such major surgery under a light? sedation. Yeah, I did. They said that it was better for your body and like the recovery was quicker. That was their preferred method. You know, that's what they said to me. That was their preferred method of anaesthetic. It's their preferred option because it's their only option. Yeah. They did say like every surgery there are small risk, but um, they do it every day. Um, you're in good hands and you're going to wake up a new person. But just this past fortnight, another woman is rushed to emergency from the Cosmetic Institute after suffering a cardiac arrest. And just like Amy and Kylie, she too was left fighting for her life. Shockingly, there's nothing illegal about cosmetic surgeons operating this way. They're playing by the rules. There are just no real rules for these businesses. Unlike plastic surgeons who must have eight years specialist training and be licensed and accredited. Cosmetic surgery is very serious surgery. It is the same as uh, any of the other major surgical disciplines like neurosurgery or cardiothoracic surgery. There is a risk and a big risk of some of these large procedures and that is why they should be done in licensed premises. Perhaps even more concerning is that anyone with a medical degree can call themselves a cosmetic surgeon. So if you're a GP with no specialist surgical training, you can set up shop and legally perform major operations like breast augmentations and facelifts at clinics like these. According to plastic surgeons who are fully qualified, that leaves unwitting patients facing unacceptable risk. Do you think that these patients might have an expectation that in a country like Australia, that if they're going to a doctor to have what is a serious procedure, that it would be a requirement by law that that would, person would be qualified? I think they... I mean, that's a fair expectation. It, it is a very fair expectation, Tara, and that is exactly what we're calling for. We're calling for the authorities to, to take the, um, the initiative here and basically say we need to establish a benchmark for qualifications and a benchmark for where these procedures are being done before people die. Well, you know that the plastic surgeons are specialised and cosmetic surgeons aren't. See? No. There's news. You didn't know that? No. You just think, because you see a surgeon attached to their name, you don't question it. I don't question it. <laughs> Bit of a shock. <laughs> and there's no doubt patients are being hoodwinked. When Amy Rickhouse went into the Cosmetic Institute for her pre-surgical consultation, she was given an information sheet 
claiming her doctor was a specialist in plastic surgery. When you look at this document and realise that it's handed out at cosmetic clinics, what's your concern? Well, firstly, the thing that strikes me is I'm not aware of the, uh, uh, the name on the document uh, being a, a plastic surgeon. <laughs> so the doctor who says he's a plastic surgeon is not? Yes, it appears that way. And to date, the clinic refuses to acknowledge it caused the dire health complications to Kylie and Amy. What about the Cosmetic Institute? What did they say? I think they were more leaning towards possibility of an underlying heart problem and I had to do a lot of, you know, tests on my heart to see if there was underlying issues, which there wasn't. Including Amy and Kylie, in the last 18 months there have been at least four women rushed to emergency after undergoing breast enlargements at the Cosmetic Institute. The Institute has been reported to the Healthcare Complaints Commission and in the last two weeks the New South Wales Health Minister has called in the inspectors. We've asked the Institute for an interview but they've said no. Are patients' lives at risk by going to somebody who is a cosmetic surgeon, not a plastic surgeon? I think patients' lives are at risk when they go to and are operated on in a facility uh, that's not licensed and accredited, where they're receiving intravenous sedation, often without an anaesthetist, by the surgeon who is also acting as the anaesthetist. Conscious sedation can become unconscious sedation very quickly and loss of airway control can occur. And this is a very, very dangerous situation. Across this billion dollar industry, customers are being sold an enticing now promise. Now you're ready for surgery. Enhance yourself through cheap, simple and safe surgery. But after nearly losing her life, months of health checks and being unable to drive for six months, Kylie Pollock has paid a price she was never warned of. I got all the bells and whistle talks, you know, you're going to look this and that. And, and of course, because you want it, you buy into it. It's like, yeah, of course. You know, I wanted it so much that I probably didn't, I don't know. See, you know what, the place looks so nice, you sort of get caught up in the world for that moment. You get caught up in the world, you walk through those doors and it's like, wow. Welcome to the Cosmetic Institute. It's a dangerous business that they're in. And that's our lives that they've got in their hand. And you know what, because it's so cheap and they make it look so attractive, the girls will keep on coming. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.